Let's learn about Streamlit. Streamlit is a really popular library to build dashboards and apps using Python. Similar to how we learned about visualization, creating interactive web maps is a very, very difficult skill set to acquire because you need to know how to work with the backend. You need to work, know how to work with data sets. You don't need to know how to host the apps. Plus you need to work with the front-end technologies like JavaScript, HTML, CSS. Out of reach for most data scientists, most people who work with Python and do data science like us, are comfortable dealing with data. We can take data, manipulate data. We can, you know, work with data, and that's our skill set. And we know how to use Python. Streamlit aims to say we can take the skill set of somebody who's comfortable with data and comfortable in creating visualization, and we'll give them a framework that they can use to create apps where, without knowing any of the front end or back end technologies. So Streamlit is a framework for data intensive apps. So if you are working with data and you want to create visualizations and have apps that are driven by data, this is the preferred way. The great thing about this is all you can do, all you're doing is writing Python code. You're not doing any HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and you know, just write code and you get an app that is interactive. You can click on buttons, you can do drop downs, you can have maps that you can zoom and pan and so on. It comes with the pre-configured widgets that you can use. If you want a button, you just say streamlit.button. If you want a dropdown, you say streamlit.dropdown and so on, right? You can use some of those widgets. Again, since it's really popular, very wide use, you have a whole range of widgets that have been developed. It also supports third-party widgets. So for example, streamlit doesn't come with a folium widget. So if you have a folium map, you can't embed in your streamlit. But third-party people have created widgets that you can use with streamlit. Similar leaf map. There's a widget for Streamlit. So if you want to use Leaflet within your Streamlit app, you can now have a Streamlit component that you can use that. So it's an extensible format where other people can build components that you can use within your Streamlit app. Just to get an idea of what you can do, let's look at some apps. I'm showing you the subset of the apps that are focused on geospatial data. This is an app built by Professor Wu. He also is the author for the LeafMap library that we've been using. This shows what you can do with Streamlit and LeafMap. The whole app, is developed using Streamlit. So you can have an app like this where you can have a side panel, you can have this main menu, you can display some images, you can have multiple tabs here. So this is a very popular app where you can now use this to create a time lapse of any place in the world. You can do a, a you know, multi year time lapse, you can just upload some data from Polygon, select I want Landsat time lapse, I want Sentinel, etc. You click submit. The request goes to Earth Engine. Earth Engine creates this and gives you the result. You can also see what you can do with just regular GeoPandas data within Streamlit. So if you have some data and you want to visualize this, this is using LeafMap to create this map. You can see it's a nice map of housing prices and I can interact with the app. I can see this. I can also change stuff. I say I want it to have, let's say change the palette. So I change the palette, my map updates and I'll see this in a different palette. I can also change some stuff. I say, I want this data to be weekly and you can see my, I'll get weekly data. So I can ha I have an app that is interactive. I can change stuff and my map updates. This is another example. You can take some file and just create a heat map layer. Leaf map supports creating heat map layer. So this is a map just showing how to do a heat map. A bunch of other things you can explore this app. There's got a bunch of leaf map demos that are built in and all of these are leaf map maps and you can put this in an app. I want to show another app. This is another app that is showing the result of a research project. And many of you, when you undertake a research project, you want to share your results with somebody. You did some a project for your company, you want to share results with your colleague. This is a great way to create a map and put it out as an app that people can explore. This was a big project where they're trying to map all the different land covers in India and they wanted to share this data. So you have this multi-page app that you can create. You can say, I have this map and you can have this leaf map map with the legend, and now you can swipe left and right and see. So again, they're showing the land cover data, what they created, and you can explore this data. So you can create this, this whole code for this is probably 100 lines. And you can just write this code in Python and host it on Streamlit for free, and anybody can explore this data. So a great way to quickly take the data that you have, put some UI wrapper around it, and publish it so that other people can use it. So how do we go about building the app? The great thing about Streamlit is your app is just a Python file. If you can create a .py file with some Python code and that becomes your app. You, if you want a widget, you want some text, you want some dropdown, you want buttons, you want a map, 
you use the appropriate widget and you create those widgets and put them in your app. There are also layout widgets. You can put it on sidebar. You can create multiple columns and so on. But I can mention you import Streamlit as ST. So when you see ST here, they're all referring to Streamlit. So once you import a Streamlit, you can say, I want to display the title of my map or the title of my app to say ST.title, give the name, it'll display the title and so on. You can say, I want a slider. People can do slider. They can just say ST.slider and I get a slider. I don't need to really do any coding in JavaScript to code the slider. If you haven't tried coding a slider in JavaScript, you'll know you will probably pull your head out. It's a really, really difficult skill to master, but fortunately we don't have to because you can use a widget like this to that does all the hard work for you. There are some built-in widgets for map and also you can display any matplotlib plot or you know a seaborne plot inside of your app as well. We can install third-party libraries which give you third-party components like leaf map folium is there so you can now use leaf map map inside of your streamlit app or a folium map and so on. There are many options for customizing it. You can hide stuff, expand it. Uh, you have columns and sidebar, etc. So you can design the layout of it. You don't have the full flexibility, but you can't design anything that your mind thinks of. You have limitation. You have a limited choice of widgets that you can work with. So you say, oh, I want you know one sidebar on the left, one on the right, one on top, one on the bottom. Well, you can't do that. There, you are, there are some restrictions on the layouts and the widgets you can use, but it's pretty kind of designed and you have enough choices to build an app that is that most of you would like to build. If you've never done a building of apps, Streamlit is easy. If you've done any kind of building of apps in other libraries, it is a big shift in how you can do user interface design. If you build user interface using say QGIS or Earth Engine, you will find that why is it so simple? Why in other frameworks I have to do so many things to get my app work? For example, a typical workflow in your app framework would be, I have a button. When somebody clicks on a button, I have to write a function that will be called and will go and update something to map. In Streamlit, you don't do this. You just write your app in a linear fashion. And every time you do something, Streamlit will execute the whole script from top to bottom and everything will update. So in Streamlit, you don't individually update each element, you update everything at once. And this is a very different model than most app frameworks. It gets a bit of getting used to, but once you get used to it, it's very simple. Creating apps is so simple because you don't have to think about states. You don't have to think about you know, what I'm updating. You don't have to worry about callbacks and all of that. This makes your life so much simpler to say, I write code. If I change something, the whole app will refresh and the, all the components will get in there. I don't have to go and say, update this or update that. Uh, one of the problems with this is imagine your whole script gets executed every time you change something. So you change your slider, the whole app gets executed. Imagine in your app, you are trying to read a very large data set. That means you'll read the whole data set again. So you don't want that. So you will have some caching functions. So you say anything that takes long time and I, the results remain the same. Every time you update the app, you just cache that and it provides you this caching mechanism. So only the time when your app starts, it loads all the data and then the data is always available. Streamlit apps can also be hosted. They provide a free cloud hosting service. This is a great thing for beginners or somebody who just says, I built an app, I want to share it with somebody. And they give you free hosting, unlimited apps. You can just go and publish that. And you get a URL, which you can share with your colleagues or friends or post it on the internet. The restriction for hosting on Streamlit is that they work with GitHub. You take your app, upload it to GitHub, and then GitHub is your store. Streamlit points to that. You keep updating your GitHub, your app keeps updating. Apps can be both private and public. So you can build apps that are accessible only to your colleagues within your organization. It's useful if you have sensitive data, you don't want it to be public. But if you are a researcher or if you want to just have an app that anybody can access, you can make it public. There's a, a community called Hugging Face, which is an upcoming community that has people use for deep learning models. They also have something called Streamlit Spaces where you can host your app for free. And again, there, many people do use that to host their app. So there are two kind of free hosting services that you can choose for hosting your apps. Or you say, I want to host it on my own private cloud. I want to host it on my own server. I want to host it on Amazon, whatever. You can host it using Docker, any place that supports Docker. And there are guides available to use. So again, you build your app. It's a Python app, it just needs Python. So any server that can run Python, you can post it on that.
and that is pretty much every server in the world. Let's get started and build some apps. I want to show you the preview of the stuff that we're going to build. So in this course, we're going to learn how to build these three apps step by step. We have, we'll start learning more streaming by building a simple dashboard, a simple app, a geocoding app. And once we know how to do this, we'll build a mapping dashboard. We'll integrate maps and dashboard together and build it. So this is more to learn how Streamlit works. After that, we're going to build some advanced apps. We're not going to do step by step, but we have code available. And we're going to kind of go through the code and understand how they work. Let's see the app that we're going to build. First, we're going to learn how to build a simple dashboard. We'll just take a Pandas data frame and say, I'll CSV file, I want to visualize this interactively. And this is a to get Streamlit. You can have a title description. We have a drop down. This is all the different districts in the state. We want to have a chart showing the length of national highways and state highways. As I change my selection, you see the chart updates. And we'll see how to kind of uh, put this. You can also pick a different color and you can see my chart will update the color and it will stay there. So we'll just learn how to build this. This is a good introduction to how Streamlit works. Once we get used to this, we'll say, let's do something geospatial. We can build a geocoding app, type in address, send it to a geocoding service. Geocoding service returns the location. We can display the location on a map. And this is a kind of basic geospatial workflow. We can use any geocoding API. Here we are using open route service API. Let's just search for an address. We enter, we get a map with the pin at the location. So we'll see how to call an external service from a Streamlit app, get the result. This is a, a folium map where we display the marker and we show the result. Then we'll say, let's combine everything. Let's create a dashboard with some maps on it. So we'll take the leaf map map. This is a leaf map map. We have added some layers to it. We have multiple layers on this. We have our chart and we have the district. And you can now drive the map through this. We can say, I want to code this. The map will zoom in where you go. You can see I've selected this. The chart will update. I can go to a different location and say, I want to now zoom to this. Chart will update. I can also have a layer control here. As I mentioned, most people will not discover this layer control, right? If you have layer control here. If you have users who just want to interact with this, you can give control like this. Say, I want to enable a roads layer. And you'll just go and fetch a road layer and add it on top of the map. And you can see now I have the, the roads layer added to the map. We'll also learn how to build a routing app. So you can give two locations and say, I want to route between these two cities. Choose the travel mode and say, get directions. It'll display the directions on that. You can also download some data. So if you want to download some file from an app, you can you'll learn how to do this. One of the stuff that Streamlit components allow is there's no way to get input from here. So if I click on it, nothing happens. Like I can't say who did this, but there are components which are bi-directional. So this is showing that now we can drive our app through the map. So I can click on a map here. So I can click on this. My map will update. My chart will update. I can click somewhere else. And you say, oh, you selected this in my chart will update. So I can now take interact with that. And you can see this is caching. So you can see my map is not updating. It is as I click around, this is not updating. It's just driving this. And this is something called, you use something called a session state, which kind of preserves the state of the app and does this. This is also what we used in the bounding box tool, which we used. This is an app where I'm interacting with the map and you can see nothing's happening. The map is driving this. It changes the center and the bounding box of this as I'm doing around, but the map doesn't update because we're using something called a session state and we have the code on how to do this. We're not going to go through step by step, but I'll explain what session state is and how you can use this to prevent certain parts of the map from updating. So the first, we'll learn the basics of Streamlit by building this dashboard. We'll take a CSV file and try to visualize and create some charts interactively with the drop down menu. We'll spend more time kind of getting the setup, everybody to get the setup done, make sure your environment is correct, everybody's able to do this. After that, it's just a matter of copy pasting code and customizing that. 